Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of this fine, fine alcohol review show that is Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host, Ted. Now, we're going to be taking a look today at beer I probably could have reviewed a couple of weeks ago when I did my Southeast Asian Beer Weekend. And it is another Japanese beer that I hope that you will all give a bit of credence and respect to. Because, it, I mean, the thing is, I've tried Sapporo and... The, the other Japanese beers I reviewed before on this show, you know, Asahi and the other ones, I'd reviewed them before I'd tried them, or I'd tried them before I'd reviewed them, rather, but this one I can't remember ever seeing or trying at all. And it is Kirin Ichiban, which is a Kirin premium beer. And it says on the back, purity is everything, that's why we only use the first press of the very finest ingredients, hence Ichiban, which means first and best. Our unique brewing method and choice of finest ingredients ensures a purity, clarity, and flavour found nowhere else in the world. I mean, at least they're confident. <laughs> now, this is 4.6% alcohol volume, 330 milliliter bottle. I got it for £2.29 from the Wine Barrel on Western Road in Hove, which I think is a pretty good price for a bottle of this size. I really, really like the design of the bottle as well. The writing is much easier to read than the writing that was on the Dixie American beer yesterday. It's still got a very sort of like regal and classy classic Japanese design to it and in the same way that you know the New Orleans one from yesterday had a classically American design to it but I like this one a bit more because it's a bit more striking a bit clearer designed and yeah it's just very artistic and nice to look at so the label in the bottle 10 out of 10. I think we'll give it a quick snifter obviously like we'd usually do to just see what our first impressions are like though because you know something can look great but smell and taste awful but it can also look and smell awful but also taste great so let's give it a snifter and see what our first impressions are like just plain sort of wheat lager smell really nothing particularly noteworthy but it doesn't smell bad so I'll give it a six out of ten for the smell yeah I mean it's it's the thing is it's like I feel, I don't know, I kind of feel bad about giving a smell or something like a 6 out of 10 or something like that because it implies that it's not a particularly great smell, but it's still, you know, a nice smell. It's just not particularly noteworthy as all. So, yeah, we'll give ourselves a quick palate cleanser of water first, though, just to give ourselves a good objective plate to review this drink from. And then... On to the most important part of the episode, which is to taste this drink and see what it's actually like. So, bottoms up. Kanpai. Okay, I've only got like one really major complaint about it, in that the texture and the fizziness of it is quite significant, so it's not like, the texture isn't the smoothest, and it's not the easiest to immediately like swallow down and digest, but I mean the flavour is pretty smooth, and ooh, ooh yeah, now I'm feeling the, f whoa, wow, that's... Yeah, I mean, that's wow. I just swallowed some of it. And then while I was explaining my thoughts about the texture, I just got this onrush of just like alcoholishness in at the front of my mind. So it's got, it's funny because it's got like this initial taste of just a clear crisp lager. And then once you've digested it a bit and swallowed it down, you get this rush of like the sensation of drinking a strong gold label beer. But it isn't like badly brewed. It is like smooth overall. The flavour is very smooth and it's got this nice wheaty sort of lagery taste with a nice sort of like finish that's kind of halfway between the wetness of like a Sapporo and the dryness of an Asahi. And I think generally it is a really, really good beer. It's just the only major problem I have is that texture. It is not bad, but it's just a, could be a bit smoother. But generally speaking, it's a smooth drink overall. And the taste of it is pretty consistent and pretty nice. It's just like... 
this clear crisp lagery taste with a slightly fermented sort of like wheat and barley-ish sort of undertone so yeah I actually quite like this I don't think it's quite as good as Asati it's probably nearing like on par with something like a Sapporo so I'll give it a I'll give it a 7.9 out of 10 it's a good beer it's just it's just not really quite as good as Asahi but then again Asahi is genuinely one of my favorite lagers so that's quite a hard bar to meet so yeah I mean it's it doesn't quite meet that bar of expectation and quality but at the same time it's not easy to I think in, for me personally anyway I think on like a normal day this is probably like a 7.9 on a day when I'm really in the mood for it it's probably up to like a 8.25 maybe an 8.3 but yeah no it's it is a good lager it is actually really nice I could probably quite easily see myself have a, a few of these at a house party or with a nice chicken katsu curry so yeah really nicely brewed and just got a good simple consistent lager taste that is just very refreshing so yeah well recommended very very well done Kerin Ichiban and yeah, I hope you guys will like this beer as much as I did, if not more so. But, as always, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you want to check out anything else I do, I'll leave the links to my other social medias and YouTube channels in the video description down below. And if you want to suggest any other drinks for future episodes of Ted's Booze Cellar, or you have any video ideas that you think might be appropriate for this channel, leave them in the comment section down below. But, until next time... Have fun, stay safe with whatever you're doing, wash your hands, take a mask with you to the shops, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Cellar. Ciao.